Josh Multiversity Comics here with the mighty Fred Van Lent. Tying, uh, or the incredible Fred Van Lent, sorry. Exactly. Taking the, I took the wrong uh, adjective. The chaotic. Yes, the chaotic Fred Van Lent, got it. Is that your preferred uh, prefix? Well, yeah. it's, it's the current one. It's the current one, got it. Um, well, going off of that, uh, starting off, the uh, kind of 500 pound gorilla in the room right now is definitely Chaos War. Um, how does it feel taking um, a much beloved, but not exactly like, if you ask people about the Marvel Universe, they're not, their mind's not going to immediately jump to the Incredible Hercules, but how does it feel taking a bit of an underdog character and a bit of an underdog book and turning it into the event that Chaos War is? Uh, it's been hugely rewarding, and uh, what's terrific about it is that's kind of what I was sort of admired about guys like, uh, or a series like The Question, and um, gosh, like uh, uh, the Doom Patrol and Animal Man, and, and really taking some uh, venerable superhero franchise. I mean, in Hercules' case, obviously, much more venerable than the comics medium itself. You know, obviously, he's one of the more popular characters over human history. But to actually have a chance to do that and bring it in a way that readers really respond to, it's just been very rewarding. So what can people expect uh, from Chaos War other than immense chaos? Uh, pantheons will fall, the dead will rise, dogs and cats sleeping together, wait, that's, that's Ghostbusters. Uh, but um, it's, it's, it, it's trying to define big in event comics. Um, you know, you have a threat that even Galactus is frightened of. You have a threat that can, you know, single-handedly wipe out whole teams of heroes with a single blow. How do you combat that? Should you even combat that? What does it mean to be a hero? What does it mean to be a god? All these questions will be answered before the series is over, uh, comes to inclusion in January. So, other than that, uh, you have your hand in quite a few pots all over the Marvel Universe, including uh, Iron Man Legacy and the Marvel Zombies franchise. Is there anything you'd like to say about either of those? Sure. Uh, in Iron Man Legacy, we're doing uh, a great arc that Steve Kurth is doing terrific artwork arc, going back to the days when Tony was down and out on the streets of Los Angeles, where he runs afoul of the Pride, uh, Brian K. Vaughn's villains from the Runaway series. And that's sort of one of the fun things about doing these, you know, between the raindrops of history. Uh, stories is you can sort of retcon the pride who should have been there when Iron Man went back in the first place, but now we can actually find out how they reacted to Iron Man moving to the West Coast. Uh, and with um, Marvel Zombies 5, I believe the trade of that comes out in November. That's Machine Man and Howard the Duck teaming up to go across the multiverse and killing zombies wherever they may find them, whether they be cowboy zombies or medieval zombies or cyberpunk zombies. Uh, and that was a terrific series to do, and Kano did a great job on the first part of the uh, on the art of the first part of that um, that arc, and that was terrific. What was it like picking up that franchise from uh, not only Robert Kirkman but also Mark Millar, who kind of uh, envisioned it over in, in the Ultimate Universe? Well, you know, it was it was very flattering that Marvel entrusted it to me. Uh, I thought we we hit upon the right idea with bringing the Marvel zombies invade, having the Marvel zombies invade the Marvel universe, and that sort of being the disturbed universe that. Um, uh, uh, sparked the whole thing, and I love Machine Man, I love Kirby's Machine Man, I love Warren Ellis' Machine Man and Next Wave, and so it was fun to merge those two together and make him go on, on a really classic adventure where his love of his life is in jeopardy, the world, the fate of the world hangs in the balance, and it was fun to sort of take Marvel Zombies and, and make it this sort of horror action franchise, you know? Do you see yourself taking the reins of Machine Man again anytime soon? I'd love to, I, uh, but at the moment that's an open question. Well, you got a table full of, uh, of non-Marvel work right here. What can you say about your, your independent work, your creator-owned stuff? Well, uh, my, with my colleague Ryan Dunleavy and I, my good buddy, we do non-fiction comics. And uh, we just came out a few months ago with uh, the More Than Complete Action Philosophers, which is uh, collects the entire nine-issue series. For those of you who don't know, Action Philosophers tells the lives and thoughts of history's A-list brain trust in a hip and humorous comic book fashion. Uh, and uh, that's terrific. And we also have here a comic book comics, which takes the same uh, sort of wacky, sty irreverent style and applies it to the medium of comic books. This is our fourth issue. We've already, we started with The Yellow Kid. We've gone up through, uh, as you can tell from the cover, the rise of Marvel in the 60s, as well as Underground Comics in the 70s. Um, our next issue is, the, is our fifth one. That comes out in February, and that's the all lawsuit issue. So you'll have DC versus Fawcett, you'll have Disney versus the Air Pirates, you'll have the entire Marvel Man mess, Jack Kirby trying to get his artwork back, the whole the whole nine yards. It's really interesting that you are taking the angle of portraying history through the graphic novel medium. What value do you think 
uh, is what value do you think there is to portraying, like using that medium to portray actual history? Because it opens it up to an entirely new audience. Let, like, it goes without saying, not only adults, but children as well. Exactly. And, and uh, although our, our comics are fairly adult oriented, I should right. say. But, uh, you know, just as political cartoonists every day in the newspaper take uh, abstract issues and current events and depict them graphically, you can do the exact same thing in comic books. And I feel that in some cases, particularly with action philosophers, it's actually easier and better to get uh, these ideas across in comics than they are in prose. And uh, I'm kind of a comic supremacist, so I will argue the, the uh, superiority of comics over almost any media. Well, that's great. I'm tempted to agree. Well, thanks a lot. Thanks for your time. Thanks for having me.